Let's take a look at the Atto editor in Moodle. The first thing to notice is obviously we have a toolbar with some icons there. Do notice this first one because this will expand the icons available. And it's worth saying straight away that the icons that are here and the order that they're in can vary greatly from one site to another. This can be edited and set up quite differently by your Moodle administrator. Icons can be removed, other icons added, and in fact, even some plugins will add their own specific icons. So don't worry if you don't see exactly the same as is here, uh, but generally it will be more or less the same. So let's start off with some text. I'm going to cheat there, of course, and just paste that in. Um, the first thing we have is the heading styles. So if you're familiar with HTML or even heading styles in word processing systems such as Word uh, or, or um, OpenOffice and so on, you'd be familiar with heading styles that you can choose to quickly format text. And that's a great way to format text because it means it can be consistent throughout your course and your text and it can be styled by the theme. Obviously, we have some uh, of the standard kind of formatting tools that we might expect, bold and italic. We can add bullet points or indeed numbered bullet points to, uh, to that, which are just HTML lists, really. Obviously possible to add in hyperlinks. So we could add in a, a hyperlink here to the Moodle site, for example, moodle.org. Um, and if we want to, we can actually have that, that site open in a new window. Um, it's, it's debatable whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I would say be consistent within your course. So if, if links do open up in new windows, then try and have them all up open in new windows because it'll be a more consistent uh, experience for your users. So obviously that becomes blue and uh, underlined when we hover over it. We can break links as well, so if we decide that we want to remove that link, we can just break that. And we can also prevent linking, and that could be useful if you've got, for example, a keyword in a glossary, and some of your text in a quiz is automatically linking to a glossary, so that could actually give the answer away or give extra information. So. For example, in, in quizzes, you may need to use that prevent linking just to stop that sort of thing happening. We have uh, other options here, of course. We can add emoticons. Um, you can choose them from the list. Or if you happen to know some of these shortcuts, you can type them in yourself. And these will be filtered. So one of the Moodle filters will interact on this when it's displayed. And if the if the filter to switch on uh, emoticons is, is enabled, then these will actually change to those nice little faces. Um, we can, of course, add images into our content. Simply browsing for an image, select that one, yeah, I've used that before, so that's okay. Generally, these days, we always remember to give some alternative text there, and that will that image will be placed in the the uh, text area. We can do the same for videos as well, or or media, not just videos in this case. We can actually use that button for links. We can use it for video, and we can use it for audio. And it is important if you, there are quite a lot of settings in here uh, that aren't initially obvious. Uh, for example, we can add alternative versions. So if you have a, uh, a video in one format, maybe it's, a, it's an AVI on the end, you can also supply an alternative source, which might be, uh, might, might be an, an MPG, for example, or an MP4. This allows us to deliver content and, and have a kind of fallback position so that browsers or devices that are unable to view this format could actually potentially drop back to this secondary format. So that's worth knowing about. We have, of course, display options where we can set the initial size and a, and a thumbnail image. And, and under the advanced settings, 
we can decide whether we want to show the play controls, whether we want to play that automatically. And I would always uh, strongly suggest that you don't play automatically. Uh, I can't think of anything more annoying on the web at the moment than videos which play automatically. Um, it should 99% of the time be up to the user. Uh, other options here, of course, as well. And then we do also have the uh, capability to add files for subtitles, for caption tracks, descriptions, chapters, and metadata. So a lot of uh, extras around the actual video content itself. And if you're producing media which needs to be highly accessible and requires really good and clear caption tracks and descriptions and metadata, then this is where you may uh, be adding it. And you'll find very similar settings for audio as well these days. Uh, we also have, of course, the Manage Files option, which is simply the file manager that we would expect to see in most places around Moodle these days, uh, where we can add files and, and download files and create folders and, and manage our files. Down on the second row of the toolbar, um, we have options for text colors. So I might choose a nice blue there. Actually, blue, perhaps not the best choice for me because uh, that's my hyperlink color. We might want to highlight a background color. And the selections here are limited uh, deliberately for accessibility reasons. And then we might have some more of the formatting tools such as underline and strike through, subscript and superscript, of course, our old friends alignment. And we also have uh, the tab controls for moving text across, he said, moving text across and back and forward, perhaps less uh, popular or, or less widely used. Some of the other buttons along here, we've got an equation editor, obviously very popular in the kind of maths and science area. We can insert special characters, which could be useful if you need one of those, you know, a euro or a pound or a, a yen sign or, or whatever. We also have now within Moodle a very nice table editor. So I'm just going to leave the caption for the moment. Uh, on purpose. We can decide how we want this table to be formatted in terms of the color and the border style. So I might choose to set up my table like this and a table's inserted. That will obviously uh, expand as we enter information into the table. So I might be doing a kind of spreadsheet or a, a, a forecast uh, and you know clearly we add information into our table as we require. You'll notice that when I click on there again, I have some very simple controls for editing that table, moving columns and deleting rows and so on and so forth. We also have a, a clear formatting option and that's useful. That's in, in fact, that's really useful. If you've, for example, pasted, cut and paste inf uh, text from Word or somewhere else, it's a really good idea to remove all that formatting um, that will potentially remove some of that hidden code as well that, that comes across when you cut and paste that, that might cause problems later. We do, of course, have our very good friends, the undo button, uh, one of the most popular buttons for me, for certain, um, and the redo button. And then uh, some really cool stuff in terms of accessibility checking. So clicking this tells me straight away that things like the background and foreground of this table haven't got enough contrast and that a table should use a proper header row. Um, this is very useful information if I'm trying to make sure that my content is, is highly accessible to different uh, users and different devices. And we also have a um, screen reader helper. So this can help me understand whether my text and my content is going to be screen reader friendly. Final button over here is the HTML view. And of course, if you know HTML, if you're comfortable with HTML, you can go in here and alter things and align things. So I can change a, a heading four style into a heading two style just by altering the opening and closing tags on that. 
and um, you know that will alter the heading style. So the editor, um, very flexible these days, lots of control, uh, very fast to use, and because of the fact that this is now a, a plugin and it, it can be customized quite heavily, in fact, by your administrator with extra functions added or perhaps some of the functions that, that no one's going to use taken away.